gonna hit that. Wrap this a up. Troll with trick, or, trick, trick or treat. Uh, trick or treat. Trick or treat. This is like the Pulp Fiction of horror films. This has. This is as uh, cohesive as it gets. They tie the story of, together well. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, and I didn't know they were gonna do that. Nope. They don't, they don't really give you a hint that everything's happening in the exact same. I mean, there's like basic milieu of the entire place is this you know the town is the same but i didn't know this was all going on at the same time in the same town until toward the end when i started picking up on you know the little nuances so it's kind of surprising and i enjoyed that it all kind of tied together for the first time in the anthology group <laughs> of all movies relating to halloween this one feels like halloween it does yeah it does. Oh, very goodness. much it feels like it's it feels like it's october the I don't know, just the atmosphere of the movie. It feels like you're, it's cold. It, it is like amazingly a atmospheric. Uh-huh. It is exactly Halloween. You hit that one perfectly. I just want to ask you guys. Anna Paquin, sexy or not sexy? Who, the, the first girl that gets killed? I don't no, know no, anybody's no. name. about. Uh, she's the werewolf know. lady, right? Yeah, she is the werewolf lady later. Probably absolutely sexy, yeah. She's from True recall. Blood. Oh, the weird one that's kind of never she had sex gap, before. Gap, yes, gap in her teeth. Um, I find her real sexy. Technically, yeah, I suppose. I don't know why I find her very sexy. Yeah, yeah. Why are you saying I'm not going to argue. Why? Because I have a huge headache, and I don't want to be a bitch about it, so I'm standing. Does that make it better? No, it's not helping at all. (laughs) (laughs) Not at all. This one starts out with that little doll guy. A real creepy doll in this movie. Sam. Sack boy. Yeah, sack boy. He kills a woman for taking her decorations down too early. This thing has a lot to do with Halloween because it sticks with a lot of the old Halloween traditions. Like, you can't take your decorations down too soon or you'll get killed. And he's in the sack boy thing. She got killed by a oh, half a lollipop, huh? Yeah. He just slit her throat. There's other ones, too, like you shouldn't be passing out, like, dangerous candy to kids or something bad will happen. There's all kinds of little... It, it's so neat how much this has to do with Halloween. Uh, after she dies... I kind of black out. Well, her husband is watching a porno getting in the mood. She's like, I gotta take the decorations. Who the fuck wants to take the decorations out after you just got back from a party? Nobody. It's like 10 o'clock. Nobody. I'm tired. Ever. I might watch the porno, but I'm not taking down the decorations. Yeah, no. So the guy goes out, passes out, watching the porno. And then he comes down and he finds his wife, like, crucified with a lollipop. In her mouth, yeah. with her throat slit, I think. Yeah. So how do you get a lollipop to do that kind of damage on a jugular vein? It's gotta be real That's sharp. Sh- sharp as fuck you gotta lollipop. lick the fuck out of it. You gotta do it just it's, right. It's, I mean, it would take you hours to get a lollipop. You gotta tongue curve it just to be perfect. I agree. So what's the very first thing that we run into here? <clears throat> the girls, I think, are changing, and you get that one little kid peeping on them, and you find oh, out that they're gonna go. They're all dressed as. Up. Different characters going to a party because Anna Paquin is a virgin. And, and this yeah. this pretty much gives away what's going on right away because Anna Paquin dresses as a little Red Riding Hood. Right away. Oh, it gives it away if you are smart. I didn't know it. No. I didn't think about it, it at all. Me, the first time. I, I kept bouncing back and forth and I wasn't sh- Actually, I watched it with my wife. It actually makes me like it yeah. even more. Little Red Riding Hood, I, I think of as a victim, so it didn't even but it occur means, to me that she would supersede that sort of a role and be... The wolf. I actually, at the very end, when everybody is changing, and I'm like, I sat there with my wife, and she had to be getting annoyed, because I was like, oh, they're werewolves. Oh, wait, no, they're not. Yeah, they are. No, <laughs> no, wait, no, they're not. But, yeah, they're werewolves. <laughs> Spoiler. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're going to spoil it anyway, yeah. so. At what point do we see the chubby kid? Is he next? He's next. True they're, treating. Yeah, they're, they keep going back between four or three. Three different stories, I think, at this point. Bounces there's all around, yeah. A yeah, principal. there's a group, there's a principal, the chubby kid, the and, girls that are werewolves, and, and Brian Cox as an end. old man who kind of, oh, yeah, is, and, and the he's group. neighbors with the principal, right. they kind of have conversation. And that's, that, that's where it kind of ties in, yeah, where and, I started realizing. Um, uh, and then there's, there's also, also just like a, there's a some group kids, of tweens. A humbug, yeah, that are that looking are, for. Which, they have a fun story. I like their story a lot. It ties in with Brian Cox. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, th- yeah, we see this chubby kid. He's just knocking down Jack and Leonard's jacking shit dick. up. Like a he's dick. being the dick. What the fuck? Hey, I'm a fat kid. You're the sweetest person in the world. You always 
treat fat people nicely. Fat kids are always dicks. No. Remember fat the kids... guy from Sleepaway Camp 3 or 4? Oh, yes, stinks. <laughs> Real yeah. fat kids are nice because you can make fun of them by like, saying they have big titties. And they don't want that. So they have to be nice to you and hope that you don't mention it. So this fat kid is a douchebag and he deserves what he gets. But he shows up at his principal's house and his principal gives him chocolate, which he vomits. Poison? Uh, I think he poisoned he, the, him? Yeah, imagine it's Something, poison. right? Or yeah. razor blades maybe made him bleed up out of his mouth. He's, I was and he's puking shit. He says, yeah. you always check your candy or something yeah. like that to him. But the fat kid basically, if not dies gets close to it so the principal yeah, he's still t- a little bit alive. yeah the principal guy drags him out back he's already got a six inch deep <laughs> or six foot deep oh, hole dug and he sticks him and he starts to bury him when his neighbor comes out he's like what the brian fuck cox going on? yeah let's talk about brian cox go on just so good in everything he does he's in everything and he's that. so he's good excellent. in everything yeah I didn't Super expect Jesus. him at all. Like, when he was talking to his neighbor, I didn't know that that was Brian Cox until later on. I really you couldn't tell by his voice. I didn't know who the hell that was. But his neighbor goes in the house, and then uh, he, he finally gets the kid who's not dead yet to stop moving and bury him. He keeps, him. like, stepping on his face <laughs> yeah. so that his neighbor doesn't find out he's burying a child. Um, and then he eventually walks in the door, and then sort of in his periphery, don't we see Brian Cox well, getting attacked or pounding yeah. on the window like, help me, or something. The principal's son, throughout this, keeps screaming out of the window oh, also. He's God. like, Dad, we gotta carve our yeah. pumpkin. And he makes fun of his son. Doesn't he? He's, isn't he like, you dumb little fuck, what are you doing? <laughs> Let me see if I have one. But then later notes. on, you find out that they cut up heads. Together. They cut up heads together. That's cute. That is cute. That was part of Halloween yeah. trade with your it's father. So Wilkins doesn't like his son Billy. <laughs> oh, and then he comes in the house and he's like carving, which I guess this didn't make sense. The, at the kids time. come to the door and he's got blood well, all over him. Sure. They're like, and his son that's Billy, a great costume. yeah, and his son Billy doesn't even like, Dad, why is your blood on shirt? He doesn't even give a fuck. I guess everybody just thinks it's a costume. Well. It makes sense later. Why yeah, they need his the jack o' lantern yeah. for their. What are they on a treasure hunt? I thought they were on a scavenger hunt yeah. for pumpkins. Something. For jack o' lanterns, these kids. I don't remember what the purpose was. Ultimately, they each pumpkin represents a child who died in the great. School bus incident. Yeah, the great something massacre of. Forty-three. That's always the year that everything happens. Had everything to be bad happened in 1943. Yeah, Halloween school bus massacre 30 years ago. Whatever that year would have been, probably the 70s, sure. if this is a modern film. 2007, Yeah. Six. So, yeah, they're, all these tweens are on a scavenger hunt getting pumpkins, and we kind of follow them a little bit later. And then we're, we're back to the town square, basically, where the Little Red Riding Hood lady... There's, like, a party going on. So, yeah, there's, like, a, a Halloween parade. festival going on, and some weird masked kind of vampire-ish guy... It keeps killing. ...kills a woman and he just kind of leaves her alive. Yeah, she was like laying against the building and nobody questions it because I think she's a Halloween decoration. So yeah, we're at the town square. Who's making out with? Who gets killed? It's not any this of the main women. This masked guy. It's not any of the main okay, women. Okay, this masked just, guy kills just, like a random yeah, girl. Yeah, it's down some little alley. It's and then he tries to make out with Little Red Riding Hood. That's later, later I think. Yeah. Later, okay. And then some things happen. Okay. So then we go basically to back to the kids that are doing the jack-o'-lantern scavenger hunt. And they're going to go to this quarry where all the kids in this town 30 years ago, the, the kids that had disabilities, that had sort of deformed bodies or, or mental issues. They were retards. They all had to go. Yeah, no, we yeah. can't say that. They all had I to go. we decided we could in some instances. Can we? <laughs> Mentally handicapped. Because I was going to drop some sweet words back in, <laughs> back during probably should, Creep yeah. Show number two, but I didn't. <laughs> I have retards um, written in my notes like five times. So. so these retarded kids are on the short bus. And it turns out that all the parents of these kids are so ashamed of their disabilities that they hired the school bus driver just to drive them all off the cliff and kill them all. And you don't really know who this is until it ties in later. Yeah. So. And basically that's what happens. He, what's he do? Give them all like a, some candy. And he just drives off a cliff. He, I well, think, he's right? going to drive off the cliff and like jump out or something. But Vampire Kid takes the wheel and just floors it and drives him off the cliff into the water. Is that not what happens? I forget. I Vampire yeah. Kid yeah, did he it. He doesn't drive him yeah. off. Yeah. So, so like eight kids die, and 
this group of tweens has collected eight jack-o'-lanterns to kind of sacrifice in their honor or something like that. And sort of the ringleader, once they all get to the quarry, they kind of realize, you know, what they're doing. And there's one girl, the witch, who they kind of, she's kind of a misfit. They make fun of her yes. to the bottom of the quarry. No. Say, uh, they no, all go goes, down first. She goes. They, that's that right. Kid. They all go down first and leave her with, like, two of the other kids. And when she finally takes the elevator thing, I don't know what, down to the bottom of the quarry, you know, she sees all these dead kids. Now, did you notice the werewolves howling in the background during this scene? No, but that's an excellent point that you made. That was sort of tie it all in earlier on, later on, I guess it would be. Yeah, it when it all ties together, it literally all ties together. So, um, so she's being chased by these dead kids. And eventually, eventually we find out they were just playing a trick on her. It's just the, the tweens. And then the tables turn when the actual dead, <laughs> quarry kids they come to play. Come to play, yeah. And they chase all the kids back to like the elevator shaft thing that they had taken down to the bottom of the quarry, but only the girl, the witch girl, who they had all been making fun of, who they tricked, is inside the cage of the elevator, and she won't let the other kids in. And basically, they all die, and she rides up to the top and is saved. That's mean. Which is kind of cool. It's kind of mean. Yeah, but she got her revenge. Douchebags. Friends play tricks on each other. I thought the main girl, the like ringleader girl, I thought she was a good actress. She's also very angry for no reason. I don't understand yeah. why girls like that are always so pissed off at me. Yeah, I don't know. But I thought she did a good job. She I liked. I liked. For a child actress. She yeah, was I thought she was. Believable. Yeah, really. Vampire guy oh, gets. Vampire guy attacks Red Riding Hood. Yeah. yeah. Vampire guy gets Gloria. Vampire guy gets ass beat. So Gloria the Virgin. Yeah. All the girl. I think the one blonde girl's her sister, right? Yeah. And, and they're, they're and she's walking down. Gloria the Virgin is walking down all a path. They're looking to try to find someone to have sex. With. Yeah. But she's all by herself, and she's met this masked man. Who we think is going to kill her because we've seen him kill he's before. He's a vampire, absolutely. Yeah, he's a vampire, so we're thinking, oh, poor Gloria. No, he tries to put the moves on her, and she wrecks him. He is killed. He's Post-taste. a werewolf. She's a werewolf. It turns out, it turns into Underworld here. Yeah. Then, is it time to tell us who the vampire is? Or is there a little more to go before that? And the vampire guy that had killed mm-hmm. is also the principal. Is it? Yeah. The principal is the vampire guy. They, like, remove his mask, and it's, it's the principal who killed the fat kid. And they, they kill him. End of story. That guy. And then we're back to the old man. What's his name? Brian Cox. Brian Cox. <clears throat> Brian Cox in his house, and we find out what was distressing him at the beginning when the principal was walking back in the house, and in his periphery we can see Brian Cox panicking and saying help me or something banging on his window saying help me out he was fighting sam wasn't he was he? fighting sack boy sam the creepy sam rain mm-hmm. sam hain mm-hmm. sam what? Mm-hmm. sam 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 rain sam i don't hain. know what you're talking about his name's sam is it yeah how do you know that because it's true it was on the back of the box yeah it's not true his name's sam is it what, the little baghead guy? Yeah. yeah. That's Sam. Well, who's he? Is he anybody? Or is he he's just, like the spirit of Halloween. He's just a ghosty He's the guy, guy. who makes sure all the rules stay in place. Like, don't take your decorations down too soon. I didn't know that was a thing, by if the way. If you put them up, you can't take them down until after Halloween. It's the spirit of Halloween, man. Well, that would only you make sense. You don't fuck with them, Let's or I'll get you. I never put up my Christmas decorations and take them down on December 18th. It doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, because they're up in, in November or something. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That was a week early. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. You will just take them down early. Well, she took him down like the night. Oh, you still can't right? do that. No, you, know, no, you never know when a Halloween party. When is, somebody though. says trick or treat, you have to do one or the yeah. other. You have to. And that's why when that kid comes to the door and he doesn't get anything from Brian Cox, it, it attacks Brian Cox. Yeah. And he grabs a candy bar out of his pocket. But yeah, what exactly. else is there? What do you mean? Trick or treat. You got a new idea? Is there a medium no? range? I don't think so. You give a kid a Snickers bar and punch him in the mouth. <laughs> That's right. Call it even. <laughs> That'd be great. That, <laughs> that would be absolutely right. No. Oh, you thought you were just getting a candy bar, but you got a little bit more, didn't you? Enter. <laughs> Brian Cox. <laughs> Trick entry, bitch. <laughs> Brian Cox is, ends up being the bus driver of the handicapped kids. 
How did he survive that? Did he jump out of the bus? He gets up I assume the... he either did that or he swam out when yeah. it, it hit because okay. he was normal. And so... All the ghosts of the kids kids come back and get him in the end, don't they? They're there. I don't know what they do. Just I assume ends. that they kill yeah. him. Sagboy fucks with him for quite a while, though. It's kind of so scary. He gets and he goes away. Yeah, yeah. he still that Hershey bar out of his pocket or something. Yeah. I feel like this movie is better than what we're giving it credit for because it... We're just kind of letting it fall flat at the end here. It was cool, well, though, because like we're falling apart. Together. It was cool because all of the stories linked together. None of them were exactly terrifying or anything, but it was cool. It was off, like we were talking about last and week. It that actually, it, had... it all dealt with Halloween. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was definitely it was just slightly though. disturbing. It was very hell. The atmosphere in this movie is Feels like just October. perfect. Yeah. I mean, the leaves on the trees, the sets, everything is just yeah, exactly Halloween. Halloween, and it's the movie Halloween. Take a freaking hint from this. It's <laughs> idealized. We I got mean, palm trees in Southern California. Yeah. Oh, that's not a good place to film a movie uh, called Halloween. I'll tell you that. Okay, uh, what did you give this? One? I would give this one. It's not like the stories aren't good enough to rate it really high, but I would give it a six on atmosphere. I could go. I couldn't go. I'll give I'll it a go, six, but I'll go to a seven. I could almost do a seven on this just because the atmosphere was perfect. I mean, it just made me feel excited for Halloween, which is coming up, and I, I just couldn't think of another movie watching any scary films. I couldn't think of another movie that embodied the idea of Halloween any more than this one, just based on its atmosphere and. That is really important in a horror movie, and I think that aside from just shortcomings in the story, which it's not bad, but aside from just not being a great or scary story overall, that it deserves a six just based on what it's bringing to the table. I'm going to give it a seven because of the Halloween format, and if I didn't give it more than a seven, my girlfriend might smack me. <laughs> but, yeah, it, no, it... You don't see movies tied together that well, and it it does. It gives you four good stories. I like that, that it ties you can together. Follow and yes. they come together, and you can watch Creep Show one and two. You can watch VHS. None I of think them it's better than tie all anything I think together. Trick or Treat is the best movie yeah. we watched out of these five. And, That's and why like John was the saying, rating. in the you know in the background when you hear the werewolves howling, you know it 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 does it doesn't just tie it all together at the very end. The whole time, you can pick up cues that, you know, this is one universe, this is one world, it's cohesive, it makes sense, and I think that makes it valuable. And you should give one point for Brian Cox, too, because Brian Cox I would give an man. extra point with a little bit of nudity. There was the boobs at the beginning, and the porn boobs don't when count someone there. talked, when one of them turned to a werewolf, they showed her boobs. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough for a seven. But also, it was very good. Uh, I'm going to give it an 8. You went big. That's <laughs> big daddy with it. I don't know if this is an 8. Feels good. He also gave Cemetery Man a 10 once. Ah, uh, Cemetery Man's my favorite movie. <laughs> Sorry. No, I've seen Cemetery Man. <laughs> Cemetery Man might be a 1. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean... For fun, it's more than a one, but it's so wacky and the it, it's, so... it's too that's wacky. That's what I for love me. for movies, fun. Yeah. Like Freddy vs. Jason is explain... not good at all, but it is a fucking I tried to explain ride. why I love Cemetery Man so much in the failed podcast that got thrown away. I did a really bad job, and that's part of the reason it got thrown away. <laughs> uh, I liked it. I give this one an eight because, uh, well, one, you guys put a lot of this already out there. The stories tie together great. It's very cohesive. The whole thing works as one. The atmosphere, not just the fact that it's Halloween, but the atmosphere overall feels good. It feels like a really good horror movie. I thought the, uh, there's not many effects in this movie because there's not a lot going, like, as far as gore goes. But when things do happen, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like a CGI demon bursting out of someone's stomach. And I think one of the things that factors in is the fact that I watched four not-so-great movies before this. (laughs) Having to watch five movies in two weeks is a lot and this was by far tops as far as anthologies go. I don't think I've seen an anthology quite as good as this one. So the acting in this was very good too. The acting in this one. 
Uh, I just hit puberty, you have to excuse me. The acting in this one is very good, too. Uh, there's not many problems I have with it. There's some, like, loose storylines here and there. and then there, It's it's not perfect, but it's 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 very good, and I'd recommend it to anybody who, even if you're not a horror fan, it's a really good Halloween movie. It is the highest quality of any movie we've seen this week. It looks like the production me. values are through the roof yeah, on this one. Absolutely. It is Now, what do we say? Really is this well. Warner Brothers? Is that what you said this was? I think it was Warner Brothers. They put a lot of money into their projects, so that's why this is, this looks so good. And I think they did a really good job with this one. So that's it for anthologies. Uh, we got to do our. We got to take care Wait, of some I have something to say. I can't be what? here in two weeks. Can we do it in three weeks? I don't care. And if you want to do that, and if we do that, do you want to do something other than the Hellraiser series? You want to do another? So for those of you out there, oh, you've heard okay. how the process works here. We throw shit out, and it just happens. <laughs> So it's going to be three weeks before you see one. But you know what? You're getting this on Halloween, so calm your fucking asses down, all right? Why did Black Out fuck? I don't know, but calm it sounded like you did it down. professionally. Yeah. I like that. I've seen so many USA movies, and <laughs> masterful at it. So all that's right. the uh, second question. Place, second place gets to pick this. Last place, which is me, which got one vote, does not. So pick mm. something off of either one of these lists, and we'll go with it. Okay. You have to watch your room, by the way. I know, okay, I yeah, heard that. In case you forgot. In mausoleum <laughs> over there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, really you know what I mean? You've never well, seen mausoleum. Best, you know, the bad attitude. Oh, best, horror horror best horror actor. Best horror actor. Best horror actor. Okay. I know who mine is, but I'm still going to bring up my list. I just want to have a chance this week. I need to write something down. I'll write it down. Best horror actor. Yeah, that is my best horror actor. Where the hell is this? I need page a, one, bottom. Okay. Can I get a thing? Oh, favorite horror actor. Okay. I need a piece of paper. Oh, I can't. Yeah, Why? Well, can I write my answer? Can you now? text your phone? You can't remember it? Oh yeah, go on. Do I need to? Yeah, text it on your phone to me, and then I'll just read it back to him so he doesn't yeah. forget it. Oh, I didn't even put. I put one that I felt definitive about. All right. Well, you're going first, anyways. Um, okay. So go ahead. What's yours? Bruce Campbell. Such a good time. He's fun. I like every horror movie he's been in that I know of. I l- I'll give you one to watch. What's that? Vampire in Retreat. I'm not seeing that. I'm talking like I'm Evil Dead, yeah. Bubba Hotep. Oh, like a lot of he's ones. he's a good time. He's a Bruce, little yeah. bit self-aware, kind of like Bill Murray in a way. Like he seems like he he kind of gives you a wink and a nod every now and again, which is kind of fun. Plus, I mean, as far as, like, just reverence for some of the original horror actors go, as far as Evil Dead, like, he he was sort of one of the pioneers of the genre, if you ask me. And like I said, I, I haven't seen one that I didn't like with him in it. And I enjoyed him in the Old Spice commercial. Hungry like the wolf. <laughs> is that... Is that... I don't know if I should go here. Should I go old school? I get a feeling I know who you should go with. I mean, this is an obvious one for you, isn't it? Favorite actor? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. You're not going to go with Tom Atkins? I wanted to, but I might go with someone that's, like, in a lot of good movies. I have to go before you. He took my favorite one. I was going to go with somebody else, but nobody's going to know who this is, and I want to win, goddammit. So I'm going to go with, uh... I'm going to go with Malcolm McDowell. Oh, he's not exclusively just horror. For, are we just going to horror just actors? Yes. He doesn't have a he, whole lot of acts. Well, horror he's roles. in two, and that's enough for me. And and also one that s- scared the shit out of me, but it's not horror. Uh, he's in Caligula, which is lots of penis <laughs> and fisting. But, You've uh, seen he, that, haven't you, Cobra? I watch the a of times. Uh, cinema snob version of Caligula. It's something else. Uh, he's in Halloween the remake and Halloween 2, and... I think he's the best part of both those movies. I think he does a really good job with what he's given, especially part two. He's a dick. And I know that that's not Dr. Loomis, but he does it well. I like him in both of them. So, and also, let's see, what's the one that we watched? Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night? Yeah. He's fantastic in that. He's absolutely just loopy. And I've seen him in some other ones too, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. I just know that every time he's on screen, I'm just delighted. I'm I know so a Clockwork Orange is so good. I know it's not horror, but it's sometimes considered just a more fan of a movie. movie. Yeah. So that that's mine. Malcolm McDowell. So what are you going with? I'm just gonna go with 
the fan favorite, Vincent Price. And I'm going to leave it at that. You're just going to say Vincent Price. I'm just going to say Vincent Price and go with that. What a bold move. I don't need anything else. Needless to say, you will be winning this week's uh, round. Well, if he goes and Vincent and Price is fantastic. Him again, sure. You have to talk some sense into that woman. Uh, Cam will be my first pick, but yeah. I can't go that She's, way, so. if done on purpose, is wonderful. I don't think he's done enough movies to warrant my best. Maniac vote. Cop. Now I'm giving you help with Tom your... Atkins is in Maniac Cop, too. Uh, all right, I'm going to stop giving you help here. Okay, uh, if you want to vote for us, you got to go to facebook.com backslash horrorcasting. Uh, you can download us on iTunes or uh, podomatic.com. We'll be back in, I guess, three weeks. We're going to take a little hiatus here. Uh, I'm not sure what we're doing. Hellraiser? Maybe. Can we do the obscure movies? We'll surprise you. So we'll good. figure it out. We don't know what we're doing yet, so just be patient, the ten of you that listen to this. I'm giving us a lot of credit here. There's three right here, so I'm going to say there's seven other people. All right, uh, we'll catch you next episode. Thanks.